Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming and hey, Baldur's Gate 3. It's been a while since I've been able to say that for what is now officially the record holder for the Game of the Year awards. As of just a couple days back, many of Larian's team and some of the actors for the Origin characters, they attended the BAFTA Game Awards. Amongst various awards won, they yet again won the award for the best game. At this point, they must be struggling for space to put them. At that event, they actually took five awards for a narrative, music, supporting role, best game, and of course, the easy win, player's choice, with Larian going in with a hefty 10 nominations to begin with. It's very impressive. You might be wondering at this stage, how many damn award ceremonies are there? Normally, one team definitely doesn't get nominated this many times, let alone win. History was made though by Larian when they won this Game of the Year category. The BAFTA Game Awards is the fifth major Game of the Year award event, and the previous winners with the most Game of the Year wins that year, such as Elden Ring, Breath of the Wild, they never managed all five. So Larian has officially made history by winning every single major events nomination. That's the well-known Game Awards event, the Golden Joysticks, DICE, Game Developer's Choice, and now the BAFTAs on top. And obviously, Game of the Year or Best Game is the most important award for any game to receive at each event. They have won at other smaller events like community run ones, like the OTK event, but to win all the major ones as well, major. Insanely successful games like the new God of War series. They won Game of the Year in 2018, but they actually won at four of the five major events. Breath of the Wild, again, four of the five in 2017. Elden Ring, just barely not. It seems that it's normally so hard for this to be achieved because it's not a vote of popularity. Some absolutely are, like the Game Awards with the online voting system, but other events like these BAFTA ones or whatever, they're more internal. They don't necessarily care about the popularity, but what the game represents, what it's actually achieved. That's why it's so impactful and obviously deserved that a game like Baldur's Gate 3 would win them all because it did it all. So, if you're like me and played the game to death quite some time ago, it might be a fun time to think about jumping back in or actually very soon specifically. There's been some reliable leaks that we have going into the next major patch for patch 7 coming very soon. Based on how this normally goes, we usually get the major patch a couple weeks after the first time it appears in the Steam database. Patch 7 files have now started to creep in already as of April 12th, so we can reliably expect the patch to be late April or maybe even the start of May. Why is it that these patches matter so much? Well, they usually introduce new features, new quality of life, big bug or issue fixes, or like the previous patch and even patch 5 of course, add entirely new content. We'll look back at the last couple to explain what I mean. Patch 6 was themed around Valentine's Day. So naturally on theme, there were many new improvements to kissing scenes, to create new interactions, to feel a lot less stilted and awkward and often quite passionless were the kisses in this game. Now there's kind of a roster of options from intense to short and sweet, forehead kisses, all this kind of stuff, and they're randomized to keep things interesting. So if you plan to romance someone, maybe you'll get a bit more satisfaction. But like I said, they add new content too. Take the honor mode thing that was added in patch 5. In patch 6, they added new legendary actions for various bosses and lots of new little cinematics like post game and the siding with a character one way or the other stuff. This was alongside new animations in camp where say the idle animations are a lot more varied and interesting, representing the character a lot better. Previously, you just have like one idle animation where you look at Karlak doing a little dance every now and then. That's fine, but when they have a bigger variety that better represents them, it keeps things feeling fresh and the camp feeling very much alive. Outside of that stuff, of course, there's loads of quality of life improvements. For example, you don't have to awkwardly dismiss a party member in direct conversation before you can go to a new member you plan to bring in. You can just do it at the planned new member immediately. It's a lot smoother. But yeah, things to make the game more enjoyable, new content. Better represented, of course, in patch five. That was the big one. This was where they added that new game mode, the much harder mode of honor mode, where you got like no deaths allowed to get the achievement, no spam quick saving. Beyond tactician difficulty, they also introduced the new boss mechanics I just mentioned, legendary actions for bosses to use entirely new abilities. There's 30 plus changes to these bosses, and even more now with patch six, we could even expect more in patch seven. Though honor mode introduced the new reward, the golden d20, if you do achieve the playthrough completion. And with that being out for a while, there's now a lot of great advice, a lot of guides, a lot of options, builds, and suggestions. So if it's something you've thought about, but maybe been intimidated by, you couldn't ask for more resources than generally now. For many though, even more important than that is the entirely new content the team went back in and recorded to really finish the game off. They added that new content section 
Journey's End as a playable epilogue based on all your choices and the characters involved. A chance to properly send off the game, but specifically for the playthrough you've just been through, very personal with lots of options, obviously. It takes place six months after the events of your Baldur's Gate 3 story. So if it's something you wanna see and you just never did, you could just load up the game right now, load to a save that's just before the final fight, go do it, and then you could experience it no problem if you're not willing to do like a new playthrough or something. They did put in a lot of work to make this happen though, to bring the team back together for this big update if you've not experienced it, it is a strong reason to try. Something like that took a lot of work to put in. I saw talk about bringing the team back together for something special over like the coming months before it happened. There was teases by the voice actors and stuff showing them together in the studio. So if you've not experienced it, it is a strong reason to do so. But you know, patch seven is coming and soon. We don't know exactly what to expect, but there are a lot of common hopes and requests in the community. A few interesting ones like proper customizable tents for your camp. You know how each character is expressing themselves with what's at their 10 and around it. It'd be wonderful if we could do something like that ourselves. Another big request for the game is a proper transmog system. You know, making your equipment look one way rather than what you're actually wearing. Or in general, just more direct control and customizations of the items you do have available normally. Or complete final stories in Act 3 for side characters like, say, Mole, who was very involved in Act 1 and 2, and yet, you know, fell flat in Act 3 without a proper ending to their story. It's just difficult to suggest and hope for things like that because it might require they bring that voice actor back in to do it. It'd be fantastic if we could do that, but with them no longer officially supporting the game or continuing the game, it's unlikely. So more realistic hopes are gonna be the ones where they can introduce new content with what's there. Therefore, there's very likely requests like photo mode, which would be fantastic for a game of this quality. You know, the characters, the visuals, getting a different angle on things would be really cool. And if not something like that, there's insane potential in working in proper mod support to allow for like a modder to make a photo mode officially. It'd be nice to not need third-party mod managers. And if you're on console, that would open a lot of doors. Some of the fan-made features are incredible from loads of different races and classes that are in there. They are awesome. And there's still tons of stuff they can do that a lot of people are hoping for. So every major patch like this, it's just an exciting time. On the topic of these characters though, and the voice actors specifically coming back in the future, there is hope, at least in some form. Both Neil Newbon and Amelia Tyler recently expressed their desire to continue to play these roles and the characters again in some form. Maybe not specifically more Baldur's Gate 3, because that's probably not possible, but they want to do more in the world with these characters. Specifically called out were maybe other D&D games where someone iconic like Asterion could appear. The desperately hoped sequel for the Honor Among Thieves film, which was absolutely fantastic, like a really fun representation of D&D, to my surprise. Having them pop up there to play those characters, that'd be insane. Larian have officially moved on from Baldur's Gate though, so it's not gonna be something like that. But take Neil Newborn who played Asterion. When speaking to IGN about it, here's what he had to say. Most characters, once I've finished with the work, especially on long jobs, and this was a particularly long job, I usually have like a compartmentalization where it's like, great, that's done. I can move forward. I'm happy with that. Let's go to a new role. But with Asterion, his rhythm is still very much alive inside me somewhere. And I feel I'm not done with him. It's not my call. But hopefully at some point I'm going to reprise him and I'd love to do that. But we'll have to wait and see. So clearly that tells us there's no official plan or there hasn't been an approach yet. You'd think though, whoever makes a choice like that can see the potential with the love for these characters. To see them represented again in some universe, a show, a game, whatever. A lot of people are hopeful for that. And clearly some of these cast members are willing. Meanwhile, Amelia Tyler, the fantastic narrator for the game, said she'd love to do more too. Stating anything Dungeons and Dragons or tabletop related, absolutely, I live for that, which is another welcome hope. Just think about that incredible D&D one shot they did for high rollers. You never know what could happen. But yes, to get back on topic, if you're thinking about jumping back in or want an excuse, I think patch seven could be the right time, which is here in just a few weeks. So let us know what other features and content you'd like to see in that patch. What could they do without requiring the team to come back in? And if you can't wait for patch seven, there's loads of challenge runs and community run things, categories you could try, and intense mod modes if you've already beat, say, honor mode. Personally, my girlfriend is finally able to play the game. She's just starting her first playthrough so I'm hoping to hop in and out of that with her. And we've already talked about honor mode as a follow-up. But if you have any suggestions for people to help them jump back in, then let us know. For now though, congrats to Larian again on the insane wins, the historic sweep, and I can't wait to see what they do next. Until next time though, I've been Hollow, you've been you, thanks for watching. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice
to reiterate that it is nice to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage is uh goodbye <laughs>